Good morning. On the third day of Christmas, it's Sunday. You might get some French hens today, but if not, make sure that you remember this is the first Sunday of the Christmas season and the last Sunday of 2020. And we gather to worship. It is the Lord's day. I'm glad that you are a part of our online faith community this day. And I hope this time together the music, the prayer, and looking at scripture will be a blessing to you. Join as we start with the song, The First Noel. <laughs>
have we not? It's December the 27th. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Five more days of the year 2020, and then a new year will come our way. It has been quite a year, hasn't it? We can make a long list, but things have really changed this year. For some of us United Methodist pastors, 2020 began as a year when one big thing was on our mind. This appeared to be the year when the United Methodist Church was going to come together and make some tough decisions. Groups within the church would shake hands and then go their separate ways. There was to be a meeting in Minneapolis in May for a proposal to do just that. It had gotten a lot of support from both sides. Well, guess what? There was no meeting in May. Things have a way of changing. What we thought we were about to see turned into something else entirely. I'm done predicting. I have no predictions for 2021. God just helped me to be ready for what each day brings. It's been a weird Advent season, hasn't it? I don't know if it's anything even close to the best Christmas ever, but I hope there have been some blessings for you this Advent season. The reminders that we've been looking at all month have have really been good for me and I hope they have for you as well. They have helped me to, to control the narrative, to do some things to remember who's really in charge. We began with the challenge to slow down for reflection. And we looked at Mary's journey to be with her relative Elizabeth. She took a time out and got away to help her slow down, take a time apart to prepare herself for what she would soon face. As a new year begins, we need to keep remembering to do that. We were challenged to keep a Christ-centered focus. Some people put it, remember whose birthday it is. Whose birthday is it that we are celebrating? Who are we trying to please? Not ourselves, but Jesus. Mary's song did that. My soul magnifies the Lord. Her song was and is our model this time of year. The third week of Advent, we heard that hard piece of advice. Manage the inevitable distractions. We were reminded that distractions are inevitable. And we thought about what must have been going through the minds of Joseph and Mary as they undertook that long, difficult journey to Bethlehem. Last week seemed really fitting for 2020. We were challenged, celebrate whatever your circumstances. And we thought about Mary again the less than ideal circumstances that surrounded the Christ child at his humble birth. Well, Advent is over, but we still have a theme. For the week after Christmas, our theme is very simple. Wrap up the season. Christmas Day has come and gone, but our work continues. I thought today we might look at the example of one of the after Christmas Day characters in the Bible, namely Simeon. Do you remember anything about Simeon? He's right there in chapter 2 of Luke, right there along with the shepherds and the angels and everybody else. 
In chapter 2 of Luke, we read about how Joseph and Mary brought the child to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. They brought an offering as was appropriate for new parents, a pair of turtle doves or pigeons. If you jump back to Leviticus, you find out that parents are asked to bring a lamb as a sacrifice. But then it says if you can't afford a, a lamb, you can bring a pair of turtle doves or pigeons. This reminds us again of the humble circumstances of the Holy Family. And then we pick up in verse 25 and listen to what chapter 2 of Luke tells us about this man, Simeon. Verse 25, now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, now these are the words we call the Song of Simeon, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. Simeon knew he was going to see the Lord's chosen ones. He had been told, Simeon, you may be old, but you're going to live to see this. And now as he held that baby, he's saying, I'm dismissed. I've seen enough. Wow. Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your words, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel. I wonder what Mary thought when she heard those wise words. It's kind of like, Jesus can make you or break you. He's destined for the falling of many and the rising of many, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. The coming of Jesus not only shone light on the world, it shines light and reveals who we are. And then his last word to Mary, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Simeon shared those unwelcome words that the coming of Jesus would also bring grief to his mother. Simeon saw very much, so much. I heard a commentary this week that focused on the word consolation, where it says Simon was looking forward to the consolation of Israel. It brought back to mind something I hadn't thought about in a long time. The old high school basketball tournaments had something called a, a consolation game or a consolation round. You ever heard of that? Um, it, it referred to, there might be um, eight teams that come together and they, so they have four games and then they have four winners that keep going. But four losers don't just go home, they play each other in consolation games. It's like you've lost, but you're not done. Consolation is not a word we use really often, but one of the most powerful examples of the word consolation comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I had forgot about this until I started searching in the Bible, because in one paragraph, five verses, we see console or consolation ten times. Listen to what 2 Corinthians says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. Paul's saying, what I got from God, I can give to you. Consolation abounds. Verse 5. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, Paul's not denying suffering, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, 
It is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. What a powerful message. Paul could have told the Corinthians, if you're a good believer, you're not going to suffer. You're not going to face afflictions. He didn't say that at all, did he? He said, I'm going through afflictions. You're going through afflictions. But we receive and share the gift of consolation. Consolation was so much more than just a friendly pat on the back. It's a blessing that strengthens. So back to Simeon for a minute. The Bible says he was looking forward to to the consolation of Israel. Now, what did that mean? Wasn't everyone looking forward to that? Another translation says, Simeon lived in the prayerful expectancy of help for Israel. Remember, it had been revealed he was going to see this hope before he died. As we think about it, Simeon reminds us of something we all need, prayerful expectancy. As we wrap up the season, as we wrap up Advent and prepare to wrap up Christmas, it may be that we too are called to be a people of prayerful expectancy. There's so much that is grim. There is so much affliction to remember. We could make a long list of all the things that are wrong. But our faith helps us to see and share the consolation that is so real. As I thought about that word, consolation, an old song came to mind. It's in the old Methodist hymnals, but I don't remember Methodist churches singing it very often, but it was a favorite song of my grandparents. And so I heard them sing it a lot. Come ye disconsolate. We're not going to sing it today. It just came to me late in the week, but I am going to put it on the Advent devotionals this week so you can hear it. But let me share a few words. The words are written by Thomas More. Come ye disconsolate, where'er you languish. Come to the mercy seat, fervently kneel. Here bring your wounded hearts. Here tell your anguish. Earth has no sorrows that heaven cannot heal. Joy of the desolate. Light of the straying, hope of the penitent, fadeless and pure. Here speaks the Comforter in mercy, saying, Earth has no sorrows that heaven cannot cure. When someone is disconsolate, often we say, cheer up. I like the fact that this song doesn't say cheer up. It takes our anguish. It takes our disconsolate feelings seriously, but then it invites us to come to the place of mercy, to the hope that is given to us. Earth has no sorrows that heaven cannot cure. As we think about all these things, I want to share a song that eloquently talks about the contrast Jesus must have experienced, the Christ leaving behind the glories of heaven to enter into the afflictions and humble circumstances of his earthly life. It's called, Thou Didst Leave Thy Throne. Join in with this beautiful song.
Our loving God, we come to you and ask for your help to be a part of your ministry of consolation. We thank you that your Son left the glories of heaven to enter our world, even with all of its pain and disappointment and affliction. He, come, he came to us bearing that message of hope. He knew there would be things that were so difficult to face for himself and also for his precious earthly family. And yet he came for us. And Lord, as we wrap up 2020, as we wrap up the Advent Christmas season, as we embark on 2021, a new year, when we admit we have no idea what it's going to bring, we know that we face a new year not alone. We face it with you, with hope, with that ministry of consolation that you bring to us and that we share with others. Help us to be a part of that ministry of consolation every day, to watch out over each other, to encourage one another in love. Be with us and bless us this Christmas season and this coming new year. Help us to know that you are with us. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.